and large quantities of sources for each wire and with the result that the age was in wheat growing declined and many people were trying to livestock farm. There was other initiatives taken at the time like the setting up of the Royal Royal Society uh, to encourage agricultural industry and the arts and arterial drainage and canals uh, and as well. Arts of Guinness commenced growing in 1759 so we created a substantial market for malt and quite a quantity of malt was sent from Longford during the later years of that 18th century. The second half of the 18th century saw new developments in technology and increased demand for food products because of the Industrial Revolution and a growing population in England. Large new means of new technologies were erected on our England and were proving a threat to our engineers. As an incentive to increase the tillage acreage and producing more food, a premium or bounty scheme was introduced by Parliament for farmers, millers, and mortars to convey grain, flour, meal, and malt uh, to Dublin from 1768. The response to the scheme was uh, slow at the start, uh, but soon a lot of large mills were erected, five or six stories high across the country, and many more were upgraded. A number of millers from this area participated in the scheme. The quality of the mills in the 19th century in Longford could be said to be on a par with any of the rest throughout the country or in England. But as so little is known about the remainder of the mills in Longford during the yearly period, we can only speculate that the mills sending flour to Dublin on a consistent basis uh, were boiler mills, that's mills with uh, cleaning facilities and sieves, and that and were manufacturing flour to uh, an acceptable standard. Coming of the Royal Canal to cool the hay towards Mullingar in 1809 and Ballymaton by around 1815 was a great boost to the industry in the area, coinciding with the English Corn Laws in 1815 to 1846. The protectionism afforded by these restrictions benefited the large grain growing farmers and gentry across the British Islands, uh, including Ireland. There was lively competition. Three mirrors along the, the canal lines, and any concession uh, granted to one was quickly spotted and, and sought by others. Following this established in, establishment in 1831, the Board of Works of the Office of Public Works was given responsibility for a wide range of services, including water management. Uh, with increased demand for food and seeking ways to create more employment, agriculture was identified as having potential for expansion. Many mills and associated structures were identified as blocking or partially blocking many rivers, thus preventing land drainage and land improvement. This created an ongoing tension between uh, farmers and mills. That continued for, for many years, and the board spent much of its time trying to satisfy both sides. Major arterial drainage sorrows were found out across the country, including the south of the River Inn. And work commenced in the drainage community in the late 1840s and into the 50s and onwards. They seemed to modify the plans, they started off on a smaller scale in this time, and more progressed. They decided that they should do a bit more and remove more years and whatever as time progressed. So, a few different reports will give uh, updated progress or changes. Work commenced, as I said, around the 1840s, into the 1840s. This had a major impact on the number of mills on this section of the Indy, as we shall see. Many other schemes were carried out in the river over the next 100 years. And finally, all obstructions such as rears, bitterbills, etc., were removed, leaving the remaining mills high and dry along its banks, as is evident today. Now, 
and they repeated the compromise and fought in the population, following the great famine, set in chain of change over from Tillage to crazy, which was another factor in the decline of many throughout the country. And developments in shipping and the availability of vast quantities of excellent quality cheap flour from the American delivery factory, and the arrival of new modern technology, and the enormous cost of adapting that really existing means was to become a major issue in the 1880s, resulting in many of the rural mills uh, unable to, to upgrade, closing down, uh, or some of them moving toward the forest near the cities, and uh, as was the case with the uh, North City Mining Company, or North as they, as they were known at the time. There were some mills remained like Clara and Belmont and Port Leach, the upgraders in the state uh, foot. Uh, so I'm going to go on to the mills then. Starting again, it's very hard for you to, for you to read that, but basically we're talking about uh, where the any crosses and Van Macarrow Bridge was being so from there back to not be the first main remit. Uh, if you could see that, the map, by the way, it is uh, in the 1960s, it's a river and the catchments map. Uh, and uh, I just marked in the various mill sites, the approximate location of the mill sites. Starting, if we start at the mill at Ahara, Ahara, there's nothing there now, but at the time, uh, we can say that, that uh, well, no, yes, I'm just jumping ahead of myself there again, just, just to say, on all those minutes I have a book, there's 10 or 11, there's one. Two sites perhaps really, uh, that have two mills, uh, even though it's just listed uh, as one site, it has two mills and there's another one requested uh, as well. So uh, that's, that's the, 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 what I have to say. Uh, I have a note here just, that uh, just to explain the flower mills, but also the uh, corn. And equally, corn mills uh, could make flower applications. Uh, now, most of these mills, as you said, there's 10 or 11, uh, most of them are working at, at different times on a commercial basis. And we can be fairly certain that the inhabitants of the area operated mills um, from earlier times. But there was a river with the fall of water that was likely to be made. And it's generally accepted that new customs and technologies were introduced by the Anglo Normans, including the monasteries and their manners and the states. And it's likely then that the Cistercians uh, had an influence on in the type of men developed in the area they had been out in Dabu Shu. Just in relation to, to the A, uh, its total length is 55 miles or 8 and a half kilometers, with the catchment area of 484 square miles, and both Jane and Copy Longford and Westby. And just the sluggishness of the Guinea can be gauged from an old PW report in the 1850s, uh, which noted that the fall of water upstream from Abish Room for a distance of about 24 miles was scarcely a foot per mile. So you can see the need. Well, first of all, there's hardly any mills in that stretch, uh, as well as that land was severely flooded. So now we can go on to, to, to Harvard. Uh, a few notes there, you can see where the river meandered around. Uh, if you could see more of the map, you would see you know, that it is likely to flood in. So that would give you an idea, starting out with the drainage of the water just, just mounted and may have its various courses. Uh, there's 
nome che è il nome di Michele, la legge non si fa a ricordi del Sangue, il mio nome è il Sangue, il 37. Io dovrei dire che è il Sangue, ma io ho detto che è il Sangue, from other takers of Sangue, e il Fonte. The bill was a substantial context, had an evaluation of 50 pounds at the time of Griffith's valuation. Now that's just a general estimation of the size of the place of valuation. Sometimes it can be through extra buildings, which can show that we put it's a reasonably good guide. And the occupier at the time of Griffiths was a Richard P. O'Reilly, who was a doctor, uh, and he had an address at North Sackville Street in Dublin. In 1865, the mill was described as vacant, an old steam mill, dilapidated. And this and another mill upstream, West Wing, were moved by the public union soon afterwards. And now we see both parties receiving compensation. Now we move down stream then to, to join the new order of Shoe. Can't read uh, what's up there now, but uh, the area is mentioned um, uh, of a mill in this general area is in the deeds of Newcastle House in the 1600s. Uh, it's mentioned uh, in passing about uh, the manner of having shoe. Flower was sent. Under the bounty scheme, a land carriage from London to Dublin by a number of people from here. And James Coates, 1784 85, James Kenny and Thomas Roberts, between 1787 and 1795. Uh, and the bounty return suggests that a new mill, a new mill was uh, built in the period from 1756 to 1785. Luke Dowler, who operated out of Tenelik Mill, rented the mills in 1803. And the mill was reported burned down maliciously by ribbon men in 1829. And the mill was obviously rebuilt, and the occupier at the time of Griffith's valuation uh, was Charles Dunn. And uh, the buildings, including the Coronel Tower Mill, was valued at £40 uh, pounds a ton. Valuation is one of the sites the valuation office report uh, indicates two mills. You know, the Ireland server uh, of that time or before it just shows one, but the valuation report says there's a bear and rye mill, that's B A R E, which is a type of a barley. Uh, it can be in the area, uh, arms in the area, uh, and the rye mill, uh, a 14 foot. They are in Waterbury. Uh, and then there was a second there was a corner man uh, with a 13 foot diameter in Waterbury and four foot bullets. Uh, and the report from John said that uh, uh, Miss Sons used was two, friend, two pairs of French bowler stones, which was very, 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 very special at the time and expensive, but of a great quality. And they came originally from outside. Paris in the Paris basin uh, and were much sought after in the making of the flower. And again, these mills uh, initially it was thought that they could save them, but uh, again they decided that uh, from better drainage or stream that they should remove the uh, mills. So they're gone. Move on to, to Tenerik then. And there's a mention uh, of a mail in a grant of uh, 1621. Uh, a chart called Barry Jewish sent a small quantity of flour from here, with only about 600, and got a round in 15 shillings. So he didn't appear again. Why or how that came about, we don't know. But, uh, Luke Dowder was the occupier of the mill from the period in the early 1800s. And John McCann and Sons took over the mills in the 1820s, but they carried out an extensive business, which 
reducing travel, reading and bike products from all market and for export. The firm was extensively was extremely busy during the family years. Griffith's valuation at the house office in Maine at the time was 130 pounds, which would be very substantial to me. You know, I think that uh, the mill may be part of the old castle and the layout may not have been uh, as well organised and but more scattered maybe than the modern mill. But anyway, the, the, the valuation at the time of Griffiths was 130 pounds. Now, the cans have carried out some considerable improvements on the mill around the 1830s. The few name books uh, gave the dimensions of the in chain links and converted it was from 211 foot long by 26 to 66 foot wide. And little is known about the layout of the mill. And the waterway may have been located under arches visible in the picture. The mill seemed to extend the arch of the canopy you see, but if we were able to focus that. There was arches, the, the river actually split, and this old picture from about of, of the 1880s uh, showed this island. And uh, it, uh, there may be one or two mills in the arches uh, where, the, where, where the river glides. Uh, so it's a bit, you can't see it. Uh, but that, that island. Uh, was, I think, called in some documents, uh, Crane Grove, so it would be very picturesque if you can picture it at the time across the island and the remains of the castle in the middle and, and the waterways. Uh, so I can't say, but if you have any evidence, whether there was two mill, two mill queens or, or no. Uh, you know, you can't left in the possibly in the early 80s. Again, they used the canals for the effect. Um, and by 1889 90, the valuation of the mill was reduced to 60 pounds, with the most hard in fee mill in the dilapidated state. Uh, now, the, the, uh, using the canal, then, the canals were daily travelers up and down the, 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 the canal. Uh, they had a depot at what was the land uh, uh, started off as the hotel along the canal in my valley and they had stores uh, in Dublin and at the sixth lap. Uh, that's just a reason for it that for the building is at the sixth lap. It may or may not be possibly as part of the mid building that was there at the time. Just to make a note from, from uh, documents I've seen that the mechanics are really, really hard headed businessmen. Uh, regular correspondence with the Canada authorities. There was constant debate and argument about uh, the lack of water, uh, the charges, security, all that sort of thing. But, uh, and as I mentioned, the, 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 uh, the island there. Which is now gone, of course, and, uh, was, was called, as far as I can see, Crane Crane Road. So, the opposite side, almost on the opposite side uh, from Tennessee, we have Klein and Klein Mills. And normally it would have taken uh, this, the Klein Mill at first, which was unusual in that it was built. After Griffith's valuation, possibly by Evan Slater, who was Irish Ross of the Mill in Klein House. And this mill may have replaced a mill located in the same river. In 64, it was described as a tow mill. And the rules by canal caused them to close the rural mills in the 1880s. And Peter, the North City Mill, two views of very recent. Uh, so if you're doing up at the last level sometime and you look immediately to your left and across the Kinaha Bridge, you see that, that beautiful building. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, 
la constitution secretary that the show made is uh, three stories. It's uh, totally overgrown now. Uh, land in Maine was purchased in 1833 by W. Henderson. I don't embarrass you from Samuel and Sankey. At the time of Griffith's valuation, roughly 1854, Nicky's butcher was the seller of the house offices and made the value of it 65 pounds, indicating a considerable size made. And records show that it was powered by two uh, 11 foot diameter uh, water wheels in 1855. Uh, the valuation was reduced in 1882 to 36 pounds, with a note added little or no business to me now. And the valuation was further reduced to 15 pounds in 1905. Maine continued to some degree another tenants uh, in the Maine world. You can name Butler, Fagans, Kelly, Milady, and Patrick Lyons, who, who came from just outside the town here, uh, who purchased and restored the Maine in the 1940s. A turbine was installed and the dynamo generated electricity for lighting. He sold the building. The holding in the, having dismantled the million and selling most of his part in the early 1960s before he moved his family uh, to Mullingar. Uh, that's the shot again, you can't make much of it. It's an entire shot, which was, she was a large figure of the volume of the world. It's uh, totally and uh, mm -hmm. to be seen. Mm -hmm. uh, so finally, then, that's just a bit of advertising. There was a special journal, mini journal, in 1924, uh, to, in recognition of the opening of the the board of the Dublin, and uh, there was quite a substantial uh, issue with complaining about the history of a lot of the males in, in, uh, in Ireland at the time and a lot of pictures and photographs. Uh, but that was an advertisement for the Dublin Marxism when they come from the family. Not other companies have like Mosses and Tara and Alfie, they have nice pictures of this representing the companies. Um, I think that's the best we can do for, for an offer is that they're in North City, they're from the Mortis, and uh, we came again. One very unhappy thing there is to advise anyone to take the North City. So that's well, that, that's about it. Um, the, the, uh, as I say, I'm not ignoring all the, the smaller areas that followed the big commercial areas, but there's a tiny bit of allowance for the Jews, I would say, not something like that. The maps, uh, if, if, uh, if Constable Turner had been around at the time, I think he would be able to find fabulous scenes of mills and, and water. Uh, a school if not better than uh, what, what, he, what they, they painted of the mills in England. Uh, so there you have it, as I said, time caught up on modernization or whatever. Uh, mills ceased for a whole lot of different reasons, uh, and we're left now with. The other remains and the memories and the history. So I find, I knew that that thanks.